<laughs> hey, 4C Divers, welcome to Facebook Live. If you're listening in, it is Thursday and it's May 28th, right, guys? Yeah, May 28th, no, 27th. And uh, it is Spearfishing Month here at 4C, so we have great presentations lined up so that you can learn more about spearfishing. And uh, this week, we have two awesome Spiros in the room here. We'll let them go ahead and give um, you a, a, oh boy, what is my <laughs> Facebook Live doing? All right, uh, we'll let them give you guys a shakedown of who they are. But first of all, make sure that you are going onto the comment section, saying hello to us, telling us where you're listening in from. And also, if you are enjoying this presentation, give us a thumbs up, give us a heart emoji, a smiley face. We want to know you are enjoying tonight's topic. So, because uh, it's Spearfishing Month, you want to go to our website, www.force-e.com, and you want to go to the, our pages to check out the Spearfishing page to see all the cool things that we have on there. We've got videos, we've got um, information about spearfishing guides that you can hire at 4 c and also, if you buy anything on our online store for $50 or more, we will send you a boat soap. Actually, I don't have it, but I should have had it. The boat soap uh, to help you clean your boat and your cooler so you don't smell like fish. Woo, this guy over here. No, just kidding. <laughs> We're going to clean him with it. <laughs> Supposed to clean him? <laughs> um, so the other thing to you guys, just a reminder, this weekend, Memorial Day, we've got our Memorial Day sale going on both in-store and online. So make sure that you're watching for that. All right. So let's go ahead and introduce our guest presenters. We're going to be talking about spearing on wrecks here in South Florida. So let me go ahead and pull up here. All right. The first person we're introducing, Mr. Paul Varian. How's it going? Good. All right. So that's Paul, me. that's Paul with a, what kind of fish is that? That's a black grouper. All right. That's right here off of South Florida. So Paul, go ahead. Um, tell me a little bit about who you are and uh, and what you do here in South Florida. If you zoom into the background, you can probably figure out where I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a commercial diver. I, I do uh, lobster and I spearfish and I used to run charters out of Boca. And I've been doing that 22 years now. And uh, Paul used to work here at 4C a really long time ago, huh? Yeah, eight years I worked here. Wow. So. All right. I I think uh, I think that I have a picture of you um, from when you worked here. So maybe I can like send that out into the internet somewhere and I'd like someone to see can that. see. I think I had hair. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And our other guest presenter for tonight, Mr. Greg Marvin. Greg. Tell us what kind of fish you got in this picture. That's a Warsaw. Ooh, That's all my right. Biggest fish, so. <laughs> That's your biggest fish so oh, yeah. far. It's huge. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about who you are with and what you do at 4C. Well, I I uh I've been with 4C for a number of years. I, I taught for um, about 15 years. And for the last seven, I was the service technician at Pompano. And um, I'm kind of uh, in hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of retired, you mean? Oh, I don't want to say. Retired. Oh, uh, Greg also um, teaches still for Four C, and uh, he likes to specialize in teaching spearfishing and scooters, right, Greg? DPV is a mm -hmm. fun one, but self-reliant diver or solo diver. Yep. Awesome. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Hold on. Let me. There's people commenting. I yep, everyone's I, saying hello. I <laughs> All right, guys. So why use a wreck to find fish? Um, this is a good question. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, all the fish are on the reefs because that's where the natural habitat. But, you know, wrecks are artificial reefs here in Florida. And some of them actually natural wrecks because they wrecked because of a storm. But majority of them are put down as artificial reefs and uh, they make great structure. So what is the uh, advantages to using a wreck to find fish? Uh, generally, it's a, a condensed area with a lot of fish. A lot of bait fish like the wreck for you know, the structure and cover, and uh, the big fish like the bait fish, and they also like structure and cover. So I guess, you know, I, 
I'm always laughing saying I think um, I think that they, they, they put down the artificial reefs to help the fish uh, populations, but really all it did is <laughs> consolidate them into one area so we can kill them. <laughs> like, I kind of backfired on them, but yeah, keep sinking them. <laughs> so. All right. So next question. How do you find the wrecks uh, that you're going to go spearfishing on? What are some of the tools that you guys use? Well, it's easy for me. I get on a charter boat. They know where the wreck is. And, and then I go straight down and it's usually there. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, um, Paul, when you're on your boat, uh, how do you find a wreck? All the public numbers are listed. Uh, you can um, you can look at, uh, they have all the GPS numbers listed for all the public wrecks that they've sank over the years uh, for Palm Beach, you know, Martin Dade, you know, Broward County. And uh, also for years, like the way I have some of my like secret numbers is whenever I'm going somewhere, I, I always watch my bottom machine. And you never know when you run over a little something and don't know what it is. And you go down and find a little 30 foot boat sitting upside down and it's your own little grouper spot and you have it forever and nobody else does. So those are the real good ones. Um, and, uh, Seymour mapping is the, uh, the, uh, chip that you can buy to you know go on your gps nowadays and it's uh pretty amazing because you can uh you know literally see the entire topography of the bottom and you know zoom in and just drive your boat right over the bump and jump in it's it's made life pretty easy but back in the day we used to line up water towers and and, and things like that and nowadays it's, just, beach, yeah. it's, it's easy well, that's awesome. And we actually sell the Seymour mapping chips here at 4C. So if you guys want more information, come on into one of the stores and we can get you that information. They're expensive, but worth it. They're <laughs> worth every dime. I promise. All right. So, guys, take us for a dive on a wreck to spearfish. So let's start, with Greg. Um, most of us uh, don't have our own boats or, um, you know, we want to go with other divers. So uh, when it comes to going on the you know, the charter boats that are here locally. Uh, what is the procedure of going for a dive on a wreck with a spear gun and going to hunting fish? What is the, walk us through how that, how that works. Well, I, I find it's easier. Even if you have your own boat, you, you have the support of the crew and the operation and the dive master. And uh, it, it just makes less difficult an already difficult situation. Um, diving off a charter, they, they know where they're going to drop you. It is very drop. So if you go straight down, you're going to see the wreck. And uh, the best way to get a fish on a wreck is be the first one there uh, before everyone spooks it off. Um, we have our secrets on how we do that. And I think I learned most of them from Paul and his friends. But I like the uh, end of the current down at the bottom underneath the bow or the stern, wherever side that may be. Um, that's your best chance. But if it were easy, it wouldn't be any fun. On a on a charter, though, you want to make sure they allow it if you're booking a charter. Oh, of charters, course. Some charters don't allow spearfishing going on. You know, it's not right. It depends on the area, area, too. Like in Port Everglades, their charters will not let you bring a gun if they're going to any kind of structure, um, wreck or, or uh, the towers or otherwise. So, um, I, Like he said, uh, being the first guy down, uh, I usually dive alone. Uh, so that's not an issue and we check multiple spots in a day um, yeah. so the um, what am I, I I've, I've had several times I've had a fish that I've seen several but usually a big fish a big grouper or cabara that's hard to get and um, I'll go back try to get him repeatedly and uh, usually how I actually successfully get him is I'll get him like literally when the sun is still below the horizon it's just barely light out and you can you can't really see it's, it's that dark that early and no flashlight, nothing, to the point where I, I cover my eyes and my mask before I roll out of the boat to dilate See, I'm my learning more. So I so oh I dilate my pupils. Yeah. So that my eyes don't have to adjust to the darkness when I get down there. Wow. And I and I go I I roll out of the boat and I keep my eyes closed the whole descent. Uh, and then I, I literally open my eyes and I'm like 70, okay, feet down. He, he's a professional. Don't do all that. And oh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not an instructor. <laughs> don't. This is what I do, not what you yeah. do. But I, I keep my eyes closed so my, my pupils are dilated and I can I can get down there and and also on my descent, I usually don't exhale ever. Like cause you can right. you can 
Inhale, go down 33 feet. And you're Don't not. listen to that either. Is this bad? Oh, only a professional. Are you supposed to do this? No, no, you told me that years ago. Okay, I don't work. even know it's bad. Uh, but, but in scuba, we never hold our breath. So I'm not holding my breath. I'm I know, only inhaling. I know, I know. <laughs> so I just, once you're down a ways, you're once fresh, me, I, you can inhale I more. I remember everything. And I, I never, I never exhale. So basically, right. before the sun comes up, pupils already dilated and only inhale the whole way down. And sometimes real sneaky fish, that's how you got to do it. And um, I got a, I don't know, 45 or 50 pound black the other day, or uh, a couple months ago, just before season ended in December. And um, I had seen him like five times. Yeah. And I finally got him. And it was on like a public number like that everybody dies on every day. And I, uh, you know, I, that's how I did it. I got him. I was back on the surface before the sun came up. And I got him. I, I wish I knew that December hunt the same five grouper that, that just laughed at me and swam away. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the difference between a. All right, everything, uh, everything that was not bikes. That was how. I, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> dust when the predators come out. This is dust time. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. Let me get back in here. All right. So you guys uh, obviously talked about getting down there, being quick, being one of the first ones down there, not making a lot of noise. Um, once you're down there, um, you guys need to, are you on the way down? Are you uh, putting your bands on or are you doing that when you get down? What's your guys' uh, preference? Well, for me, I um, certainly want to be loaded before I get there, but I'm taking care of equalization first and primarily. But uh, if you're loaded and ready, because often you only have a few moments to think about the shot when you're the closest to the fish you're going to get. So you want to be prepared with a loaded gun. Yeah, yeah. So you want you want to show them how you load? Yeah. I'm All right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul always has the best uh, advice on how to load spear gun bands. So he's got his spear, the spear gun behind. There we go. I, I shoot a Rob Allen gun like this. It's really simple. I only I shoot a one band one. Um, but quicker. it's uh, yeah, it's just quicker. I mean this this gun the way it comes, I, I think it's overpowered. I just I, I if I bought this, I'd take one band right off. But everybody their own preference. Um. When the gun is actually a lot easier underwater because all this gravity doesn't take effect. Um, the quick reload for me on the Rob Allen is the, the notched end on the bottom. I make sure the, the line goes on the top. I bring the line up about two thirds of the way up. Well, and I hold it right there. And then this, mind you, is floating above your head in, underwater. And I grab the muzzle like this and just well, like I said, this is easier underwater. You just slide it through, and as soon as it's in the track, on top of the, the uh, barrel of the gun, I just put my thumb and my right hand on it to hold it in the track. Slide it right, slide it right down, like that. It's one spin, holding onto the line still. Put it on the holder, straight to you. I, I do my right hand right at the end of the band, right to there, pull back. Is loaded, so I, I can do that. I mean, I've been doing it a long time, I can do it pretty quick. I've seen you do it <laughs> in a matter of seconds. Yeah, I, I've, I've missed a grouper and reloaded and shot him before he realized what happened. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a muscle memory thing, you know, once you do it a bunch. It's, and that's your favorite gun, right? Yeah, I use a 110 Rob Allen. Uh, probably gonna buy, I was gonna buy a 120 Rob Allen, but they're yeah, out. I haven't. Yeah, no, they're out. Somebody bought my last one. I was gonna, I literally came in to buy it and it was gone. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like Rob Allen's. Um, I mean, that works. Same with Koa's and Rife's and all the others, you know, pretty similar. I got like an extra wrap on a Koa and more bands, but I I prefer simpler guns that I can reload faster um, to more powerful guns that uh, take a little more time. But there are several times where I wish I had a three band Koa. Like when I see that group where it's like, 19 feet away i'm like oh man yep. i wish yeah. I, I wish i had a bigger gun right that's now that's why I, I usually take the co yeah i 54 i yeah. it's a you know whatever you have like whenever you have a, a three band co you only yeah. seem to you see like the small yellow snapper. jackson small yeah. snapper and, and then whenever you have like your rob allen you see that big cubera 19 feet away from you and you can't you can't get it so it's whatever you get you're gonna lose i promise but uh I, day in day out for my job your average fish were not trophy hunters, you know, when you're commercial, they're just getting lots. So uh, I like the Rob Allen's because they're faster reload. And so 
All right, so we've got the reload. We've got the, you know, loading and, and getting ready. So we get down there. You're on the back. Okay, maybe right when you drop down, you're not seeing any of the fish. So what is it that you're doing when you get on that wreck to kind of go? Do you guys go in a pattern around the wreck? What are you, what are you guys looking for when you're on the wreck? Well, for a pro, it's a different methodology, but I like really big wrecks. So you can spend the whole dive looking for for hiding places. But uh, on the smaller wrecks, you might go off of the wreck because if the fish are spooked, they're going to go to their little secondary hiding place. Oh, they're on the, and especially good, the wrecks on a reef or something exactly, like that. Yeah. Anywhere near reefs, they're going to go find a little hole to wait for you to leave. Because they know their condition that you're just going to last, you know, half an hour and then you're going to be gone for the rest of the day. <laughs> it's their wreck again. So. Yeah, if it, again, if it were easy, it wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> Paul makes it look easy. I've seen him die. I lost today. You did? Nah, I, no, I, I wouldn't admit it. I, I, <laughs> I shot three hogs and a lionfish all day long. And it was like, I saw three grouper, but they are smarter and faster than me. Yeah, again, his limits are different than oh, record. Yeah, yeah, sorry. He, he, he has a permit, and uh, he shares it with a fish house so we can all, when we're not successful, we can go to Pops or wherever and buy our fish and take it home for dinner. Because sadly, when, when I fish, more often than not, I go home empty-handed. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> it's it's, it's a thrill of the hunt. Exactly. exactly. You, get fish. Well, you wouldn't be sitting here if you went home empty-handed most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you dive enough, eventually you're going to shoot a fish. Yeah. All right. So, um, like you guys said, you're looking for the fish. They're going into maybe some hiding holes. So what happens when you do spear that fish and it goes down into the wreck? Like what are some of the ways to retrieve that fish? Well, for me, it's chaos. But Paul can probably explain how to really do it. No, it's chaos. Yeah, it's it's chaos. Uh, by any means necessary. Yeah. It, sometimes you, I mean, sometimes you get in really uncomfortable situations. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you, uh, you don't want to stay too long. You yeah, you trapped. find yourself. At first, you know, a lot of times, okay, I guess I can say this. Before you shoot, sometimes you have to think of the repercussions of shooting. What's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen immediately afterwards? Because you can get yourself in a really sticky situation if you shoot a big fish in a hole, in a wreck, deep water, anything like that. And um, I had probably two or three fish this week that I passed on because I I just said to myself, I, there's like a 20% chance I stone this fish and everything's fine. And there's an 80% chance that chaos and I'm going to lose a shaft and not get the fish or I'm, you know, it's going to be too much of a mess. And, um, so I'll, pa I'll pass on them, but, um, the, uh, so you do have to think about that because especially in Rex, there's a bunch of twisted metal. I mean, we both got yeah. bleeding yeah. a bunch from Absolutely. trying to, you know, rip fish out of the rack and, and get, get them. And it's, it's tough sometimes get a, get a good flashlight. Um, mm -hmm. big blue. Yeah. You gotta get a big blue. I don't have one. They're very bright, like start at like a thousand lumens. And I believe that model is the sharp focus. Um, and then others like the the uh, wide angle or the uh, ability to change the focus. I think I should right. be sponsored by Big Blue because I don't have one and I want one. But <laughs> well, that's true. Really I, I gotta get one. If you're paid I have that $17 light they have by the front door. It's, oh, all I have. it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, but it's not like. It's so, so how would you mount this uh, flashlight? Well, I don't mount it. I do put it on a uh, scissor clip and on my D-ring, so it's always there. On my left chest D-ring. Yeah. On, on a piece of me. line about this long yeah. because it's just long enough to where you can have your well, – I'm right-handed. My right hand on, on the gun and and use the light. And it, it, when you shoot a fish and chaos erupts and you right drop out. things and all that, like it's it's still connected to you right here. But it's long enough to, to be able to do that, but it's short enough to like not get in your way or tangled around all your other stuff that you have clipped to yourself. So and you don't leave it down there because that's what will happen if you yeah. end up uh, wrestling a fish. Yeah, forget yeah. about the line. Forget about the line. You have to go back yeah. and get it later. All right. Well, that I mean, since we're talking about equipment, right? This is a uh, this is definitely something that is a good topic. So let's talk about what is the equipment you're using. You talked about your guns. You talked about the um, the lights, but what else are you going to use? I mean, once you get that fish on the rack, you got to come up with it, right? So, what other items are we going to use to bring a fish up from a rack? Well, I think it's for it's a little different for me than it probably is with Paul. But I'm going to try to quiet that fish down by braining it. 
And the stringer often can be a great tool for that. I believe it's, yep, it's pretty sharp on that end. So if you can brain them if you hadn't already stoned them, and then once you have them under control, you can just put that through the gills and secure them. And I generally will keep my fish all the way to the boat ladder. And, uh, of course, I never put it on my body permanently. I like to hold it in the crook of my arm. So if I get surprised by Neil, who wants it more than I do, I just open my arm. But um, these are very useful. I like a smaller one. Uh, you might need a bigger one for the golf, where you would put just fill that stringer completely up with fish. On a rare occasion, um, I'll put it on a bag and I'll send it up. But on a charter, they're more concerned about the divers in the water and the you know the rest of the the clientele than your your fish bag. So um, if you keep your fish with you, you'll more likely have it to take home, right? Yeah. But what? But when you know you're on your boat and you know your captain and you're the only one in the water, you blow that bag. That's what yeah. you're looking for. That bag. Nobody else. Yeah, I usually lift yeah. my fish. Not novice blowing by the. Yeah, I usually lift my fish yeah. when I'm leaving the bottom. That yeah. also signals the boat that I'm on my way up. I think that's your favorite thing to do. Is what? When you blow that fish. Uh -huh. And you wave goodbye. Yeah, there's been times I've sent up like things yeah. I'm very proud of. Yes. Like and, and I'm like, I wish I could be in the boat. And like yes. I was talking, I had a dive three years ago. I was talking to my friends the other day, and um I was like, Man, I wish I was in the boat the day that one stringer came up. Yeah. And I just like because I like got my ascent, I was like, wow, like you know, that was so good. And I shot like eight blacks up to 52 pounds oh, and, and a Kubera on one twenty-four night oh, dive. That's and it was be like the best dive I've ever had in the East Coast. And, I can uh, imagine. Yeah, 230 pounds of grouper and snapper yeah. in one dive. And uh, I, I set the bag up. I didn't. I was actually going to go up with it in my hand, but the bull sharks got all mad. So, yeah, I, yeah. so I decided I just blow it. And, uh, <laughs> and, I, uh, and uh, the whole way up, I was like, man, I wish I could see their face when that hit the surface. But, you know, that's yeah, – that's, I usually just lift bag it. And I'm not doing usually – the way we hunt, we don't do a wreck for long. Like I'll be down right. for seven minutes and I'm out of there. No do it you leave, go yeah, somewhere else. That's it. Um, so I cover many spots in a right. day where most people dive a wreck, do a tank on a wreck. I'll get three dives out of a tank. Yeah, I get one shot on that wreck. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys have a, a bag here. What 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 kind of bags do you guys use to send fish up if you are gonna send this, them? This is a Carter twenty five pound lift bag. Kind of the standard. This is one of the long ones. This is. Oh, yeah. oh, the shorter ones, but uh, these work good too. Um, also, just those open-ended bottom ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the cost nowadays, like forty bucks. Mm -hmm. But those open-ended ones are good. Um, sometimes I like the open-ended ones because I feel like if, if there's like a like a shark or something, like really give me a hard time, and uh, I hate that moment where I have to like take my reg out <laughs> yeah. like literally stick my yeah. face up to a yeah, yeah. stringer full of bloody fish and, and i have point. that i have that one moment where i feel like weak you know like i'm like uh, so Very i'm vulnerable. blowing into this thing and so it's the open-ended ones are like i can kind of keep an eye on what's going on if, there, if the situation has gotten a little hairy <laughs> so. awesome okay so somebody wanted to know uh do you guys ever chum and wait for a grouper and how do you uh, keep from spooking a gag grouper? So it's about groupers. They want to know, do you guys chum when you're on the wrecks? I like that question because, one, gags are not very easily spooked. They're the easy fish. Um, and some, I, don't, I don't get the opportunity to chum because I, I like to dive charters for, the, uh, for many reasons. I prefer charters unless, you know, someone invites me on their private boat. But uh, chumming is something you might find more in free diving, uh, where they have to prepare the site because they're only underwater of one or two or three minutes at, at the most. But uh, yeah, you can chum if if you dare. Lob if you dare, I, I don't even know if it's legal, but uh, lobster has the know. best chum ever. Yeah, yeah. Like if you Crunchy tell your lobsters, they like the noise. Too. It, well, you take the heads. I yeah. freeze them sometimes and. Just smash, I, I just take them in a five gallon bucket right. and then take a scuba tank, just smash them in there yeah. and pitch them out. Muttons will eat that out of your hand. Like it's ridiculous. Um, groupers, not so much. They hardly care, but they come over to commotion. Like if the bait and other stuff's going on, right. grouper are, are curious fish and they'll come over and see that. Um, I wouldn't so, show them though as a, 
a recreational Spiro, you might be asking for more excitement than you're looking for. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to jump more. I used to yeah, anchor. I used to anchor down a lot. It's a special case. Chummy <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, works a lot more for snappers and stuff. As far as food and grouper, I know it's a thing you have to figure out, but. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. The calmer you stay, the calmer they will be. If you dart at a fish, especially a grouper, they are going to dart away, and they are faster than you. They are built to swim, and you are not. Simple as that. So, a lot of times, I'll see a grouper, and I'll even even move away, or like gesture, like I pretend like I didn't see him, and keep care. my breathing super calm and very slow, and in and out, and and they'll stay calm. If you go swimming at them spastically, they're they're going to take off. You know, they, they, then they're going to take off a lot better than you can. So you're not going to get them. So um, if you are doing something, a lot of times on reef, uh, I know there's a wreck thing, but on reef, like, if you, shoot, you know, if you shoot a fish, you'll see a grouper come out and look at you because they're curious, but they keep their distance. So you got to stay calm, play that distance. And, you know, especially with gags, that was a question in particular. If you're calm, gags are usually going to be calm. Mm -hmm. Anything, if you start swimming straight at full speed, blowing bubbles like, you know, like crazy, they're going to run. You know, that's that's pretty natural. Uh, I mean, if I was walking down the street and somebody started steaming straight at me, I'm going to turn around and run. You know, like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm out of there. But uh, so the group are like that. So if you stay cool, it's so stay hard calm. to do, though. I mean, yeah, when you is. see that big fish, your heart's pounding and you just you think if you don't go now, you're not going to get close enough. So, uh, you know, you have you've seen a lot more fish than I have. Yeah, I know. that's the difference. So it's, it is hard to it's stay hard calm, to but calm. if you. Yeah. Play them like almost pretend like you didn't see them. They'll sit. Uh -huh. They'll sit their bellies down and look at you like you know, and uh, fan in the little oh, fins. And that's my and sometimes, thing. sometimes I've even uh, when a grouper is like looking at me sitting on the sand. Sometimes I'll get down on the sand and look at him like thirty feet away. Oh, wow. And then uh, they're looking at you. And a couple of times I've actually taken and blown sand in front of me. Yeah. Because they're curious. They want to see what's going on. You blow a big sand cloud in front of you, and then you just like. Take a big breath and swim as fast as you can through the sand cloud. So all they see is like the sand cloud. Yeah. Suddenly you come flying out of it at full speed, and like they, they they turn to run and hopefully. Why didn't you teach me this stuff years ago? <laughs> it's been a really sharp uh, learning curve. <laughs> Very slow. Curve. I mean, there's only so much you can learn on the internet. You got to go do it. <laughs> all right. So, Greg, tell us about the first time you ever oh. got a fish. Well, it's a long story, but I'll keep it short. Um, back in the day, whoever got a good fish, it didn't have to be the biggest one, but that was my first fish, and everyone was shooting uh, cobia, and I was just in midwater on a very deep ledge in, in up north, and everybody's just shooting cobia, and I'm just trying to stay out of the way when one of the divers points to the bottom, and he's like, go get it. So I'm like, me? And he said, yes, and so I swam for everything I was worth. And it just, when I couldn't swim anymore, I just reached out and pulled the trigger and hit that that small grouper. That's a nice one. But uh, <laughs> it, it was 155 feet deep. So when you get that deep, you're really breathing really hard. And I was very excited. But uh, then he came down to greet me and said, you know, give me the high five. And, and I got to wear the white coat that day. So it's my first grouper. Proud moment. All right. I was younger then, but still great. How about, how about you, Paul? First fish I ever shot? Um, my friends Evan and Brian Kennedy took me out on their boat when I was 18 years old and stuck a plastic backpack with straps on it and a scuba tank on it and handed me a pole spear and threw me in 65 feet of water by myself and said, yeah, just come up before you had air and don't come up too fast. Said, okay. And I went down and I shot a hogfish with a pole spear and I caught three lobster. And I came up and I'm like, I like this diving thing. So I came in, I actually came into 4C the next day. And spent like fifteen hundred bucks when I was eighteen years old. I was all I'm like, ah, I'm a diver now. So, <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm forty two, and I, I do it for a living still. So I can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know that he didn't mention this before, but uh, Paul was on a TV show. Yes. Yeah. Movie star. You are a movie star. What was it called? It's called Catching Hell. <laughs> Catching Hell. It was on the Weather Channel, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. I bet you you could go and uh, go on YouTube and find some of the episodes and. Uh, I think they're all on there. Yep. <laughs> I haven't seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you like listening to uh, Paul stories, you can go and catch uh, some of those on Catching Hell. If you're in anywhere but the U.S., they're on Netflix. Oh, there uh, you go. In the U.S., they're not on Netflix. Oh, Why well. Is that? I don't know. Oh, so. um, Greg, I had a question for you since you're an instructor. Is there any um, types of courses that someone could take to help them, uh, you know, with spearfishing? Solo diving. Well, uh, yeah, self reliant diver with Patty or solo diver with SDI. I teach both, by the way. Um, but, you know, a lot of dives is helpful. You really want to be a comfortable diver before you start shooting fish in the face. Um, but it's a lot of fun. It's really about the hunt, not the kill. And it's, it's rewarding to eat the fish that you shot that day. But um, you, you want to continue your education, get better and better and better. And, um, you know, if you're not an advanced diver, don't dive too deep and, and take baby steps. And you'll enjoy it more. You won't spook yourself quite rarely because that can happen, <laughs> even still. <laughs> Did that answer the question? Yeah, okay. awesome. And uh, obviously, people can uh, come into 4C. They can request you. You can do some classes I'm with them. Questions. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah I've got you. So um, up, another uh, another question is, everyone's asking about the shirt you're wearing, Paul. Oh, there's my wife. <laughs> They're asking about the shirt you're wearing. Um, I'm married. My wedding ring fell off. My wife's right there. Um, uh, the shirt. No, this is uh, me and my wife started a company. This is our logo we uh we started in a couple other fishing apparel logos and they're called a uh, third refine hopefully i think they said they're going to start carrying four a little while i think it's actually the problem the delay is on our side so <laughs> we'll get full running soon but you can go on to instagrams or facebook and get third refine also uh, there's a bull shark question um ah okay how do you, how do you with deal with bull sharks, sharks if they approach I, do a bullshit, okay? I don't know. I always watch what you did. I just shoot him. Try to emulate it. <laughs> no, we don't shoot sharks in the face. <laughs> no, I know. We Sorry. poke them in the face. Oh yeah, no, I, I gently shoot them in the face. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Beer down, beer down. Sorry. I'm trying to not have it sitting right on the table. I'll put it over there. Um, what you don't want to do is feed a bull shark. No. Nah. And uh, make it harder on everyone else out there. If you're not ready. Get up with a buddy, learn to do it together with someone with more experience. And um, but bush put the thing on a bag and blow it. Yeah, get rid of your fish. Yeah, get and rid then, of it. And don't don't give it away. I, I do shoot them, but it doesn't sound as bad as it sounds. Um it doesn't kill them. I no, I I sh I, I don't Fairly recommend hard. shooting them because uh, years of experience I know I, like I said, I shoot a Rob Allen gun with one band, so I, I shoot a very underpowered gun. And at the at the Furthest out my gun shoots, it's not very powerful. The shark skin's very thick, and I know I shoot them when they're like 15 feet away, yeah. and it barely goes in and pulls right off and makes them away. It just makes them go away. So as a, as opposed to them hurting me or me actually hurting them yeah. for real, that seems like a reasonable uh, thing. And I teach them, don't come near me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they, bull sharks are super scary, but they're they're uh, they're schoolyard bullies. Like they're they're not used to anything coming at them. So when you come at them. I yell at them, you know, if I'm unloaded or something, I'll, I'll you know, swim at them and yell and they'll, uh, they back off because they're not, they're not used to anything, you know, testing them. So you shoot them, yell at them, anything like that, let's get rid of your fish and, and you'll, you'll be fine. They're, they're, you know, that the amount of fish that people shoot and the amount of issues people actually have with bull sharks is very, very little. Um, you know, sharks are super cool. They're super important. You know, they're a pain in the butt when you're a spear fisherman just because you're competing. But, you know, just try to, I just try to make them go away. And I go that way, they go the other way. Life's good. But, uh, you know, they are intimidating. I had one the other day that scared me. I had to yell at them. It's always scary. I had an empty gun. I'm swinging my unloaded gun at him. Like, <laughs> like, I was, but he went away. That's why you need a spear fishing guy to help. Yeah. You guys should actually, you should check out, um, I should, I'll send it to you guys. Uh, we have on our YouTube channel, the 4C YouTube channel, if you go Somebody and check out. Were cut off. Yeah, because you filled your beer. Oh, I'm cut off. No, yeah. That was only two years, I'm good. <laughs> no, but there's a, <laughs> that is young. there's a funny video. Um, 
when we used to do in-house uh, presentations uh, and have you guys join us here at the stores instead of doing Facebook Lives, uh, we had spearfishing roundtable with the pros. And so the guys would come in and give them their stories. And the first one we ever did, uh, I video recorded the story about there's a kid that used oh, to work here, Justin, or sorry, story. Chris Burke. Burke. Chris Burke. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he had a great story about a great white shark. Yeah. And spearfishing. It's the way he told the story. Yeah, he was rolling all over the floor. It was hilarious. So you know there were what? A lot more beers on that. Night. Yeah. <laughs> Go to our YouTube channel and I uh, find that video. If not, if you registered for the event tonight, I'll send it in the uh, in your uh, email. So, um, but I, I do. Was, have I a, was there that day. That was fun. Yeah. You were one of the spear pros. No, I mean I was there on the boat oh. the, day he, the day he came flying out of the water because the great white. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um. But you know, talking about fish and, and and good stories, is there that one fish story that you're like, man, I love telling this story. I bet you are. Everybody here would love to tell hear hear you tell your story. So that one fish that you caught that you're like, man, that was They're it. hard to catch. You got to shoot. Um, that's my favorite, right? They're yeah. hard to catch. You got to shoot. I, they're all fun. I don't I can't think of that. Yeah, Warsaw is hilarious. Oh, this dude, I dropped him on. I dropped him on a deep wreck. That was my 15 months of fame. And yeah. and he came. Oh no no, you were on. I was so you were on that on that little spot. I got in 213. Yeah, uh, the, the little the little cave. Spot. Yeah, I don't but, remember where. But it was. it was so deep. And when I got there, um, I was alone, which was stupid. But um, you're perfect. Well, I was playing one on TV. No, not TV. But anyway, it was really deep, and I shot. I was looking at the hole I was supposed to be at. There's no fish. And I look over and there's a fish coming through the hole looking at me. So I shot him. And he was just so big. And then I had to shoot him again. And then I shot him again. And then I was <laughs> out of time, out of air, and I had a deco. I came back to the boat and I begged Paul for, I think, an hour and a half to drop me back out there. And he said, well, what kind of fish was it? I said, I don't know. It was a big fish. He was so narked. <laughs> I, I, was, I was narked in the water. But, so he warned me there will be sharks waiting. And I said, it's okay. I'm just going to go see what it was. And, and sure enough, I didn't have sense enough not to bring it back. And luckily, he was on the hole I was supposed to be at. And full sharks circling. And I shot him in the top of the head and pulled him up, blew him to the surface. I go, oh, crap. What kind of fish was and now I had Deco to do. It was so. a Warsaw. It was a nice and, fish. And I had never seen a Warsaw, but uh, I knew it wasn't a Goliath. I hope it was. <laughs> it was um, so I guess we need to have some uh, fish ID courses. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't 220 feet of water. Yeah. So, uh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> he came up like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I made you tell that story. <laughs> no, that was my favorite fish of all. That yeah, was a big fish. Um, mine, I have no idea. Um, I love I love when you stone them when a, when a plan works out and yeah. you, you hit them in the right spot. When you, especially when the odds are really against you, every time you stone them, you're just like, oh god, like got him. I I'll never forget one time I was on the guy Harvey and uh, and a, fit, a big grouper, <coughs> excuse me, was out in the sand and I was over the cargo hold and. Uh, I looked at him, he started darting towards the wreck, and I was kind of on the wreck, and he was coming, coming towards the wreck. And I'm like, I'm never gonna get him, he's, he's flying. And he went under a piece of wreckage that was probably like 20 feet long. He went under there, but I knew, I've been on the wreck a thousand times, I knew where he was going. Mm -hmm. And there was like this little five foot gap between the cover that he was under and where the hole where they always go. And I literally just aimed at that gap, and just like took a guess and pulled the trigger, when I still couldn't see the fish, and I could see, it was like one of those slow motions. I can still remember, it was probably 10 years ago. I can see the shaft going, and suddenly his head pops out, boom, and stoned him. I was like, wow. Uh, I literally, like, I, 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 I don't know, I was like, There's a spot nobody saw that. Going. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. and nobody was here to see that. Like, but, uh, but it was, I was very proud of that. But. Uh, so talking about shooting big fish, uh, they had a question. Uh, when you shoot a big <coughs> fish and it takes you for a ride, what is the strategy that you use? Do you dump him? Do you let the gun go? What is what no is your shot? <laughs> I uh, most fish won't pull you up. Right. Um, some will, and, and I, I I've actually been hurt myself. I had a, I had a fish pull me up, and I I, I didn't get hurt. 
Um, so that's where you gotta be careful. Um, you know, be, you know, so dump air, swim down if they if they're you know a cuda, a cobia, something like that. That could pull you up. Um, that's your only issue. Um, the other fish groupers and stuff like that. You try to apply pressure to stop them from getting into a hole or whatnot but not too much pressure to pull the shaft out so you have to kind of learn and be a judge like how when you see your shot in the fish mm -hmm. how good of a shot was that is the flopper fully out the other side and engaged on a good hard spot of the fish or is it barely in there you know and you 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 know well, go you accordingly used to, you used to dive two rob allen's for that reason yeah right? i still do yeah okay. yeah actually i ride the rob allen's are small mm -hmm. guns so i carry two so two and one fish. usually i can if it's the shots barely hanging on, say so I get them in the gut. And so right. You can see the flopper below their skin. I I yeah. kind of let them pull me. I yeah. only swim with them and, and while I pull the second gun. Or um, if I see the floppers out on the other side, I'll just put brakes on and pull them. And you know, just they'll be going for that hole and just stop them because if you get them before they go into the wreck, it's a lot easier than Try to trying to drag out. them out of the wreck backwards. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that is the presentation tonight. Uh, we have a $50 gift card to give away because if you registered for tonight's event, uh, I put your name into our random name picker. So let me bring that up. All right. There's the random name picker. And whoop, wait, hold on. There it is. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Random name picker? Yeah, there's everybody. So let's go ahead and see who wins a 4C gift card. They can use it to buy their next spear gun. All right. Wow. Barry Greg, Barry. If you are watching, give us a thumbs up. Give us a woo woo. All right. In the comment section, let us know that you're excited. Uh, we will get that over to you and you can use it to get your next spear fishing accessory or gun. All right. So Guys, I can't express how much uh, fun it is always to have you as a pres presentation. Uh, you always always have the best stories and great tips and tricks. So thank you all hopefully, for coming in. Hopefully next year we do it back in person and the whole deal. Yeah, maybe next time we'll have uh, everyone in here and they can give you the questions and uh, yeah. you'll have more fish stories to tell. So thank you and everybody, thank you for watching. We will see you later. Bye.